To find a limit from a table, we must look at the behavior of the function without actually having the graph. Here's a table of our x values and our f of x values for a certain function f of x. This first question asks us to find the limit of f of x as x goes to 9 from the right side. Recall that the plus sign up here means find the limit from the right side. So we're only going to pay attention to what's happening on the right side of the graph. Since we don't have an actual graph here, we have to envision the graph. And since we're trying to figure out what's it going to approach as x approaches 9, we're just going to focus on the x values that are greater than 9. So it looks like as we're getting closer and closer to 9, we're going 9.1, 9.01, 9.001, we're getting really close to 9 without actually plugging in 9 for our x value. Our f of x value or our y value is getting really, really close to 2. That means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 9 from the right side is equal to 2. Now we need to do the same thing with the left side. The left side means that we're coming in and evaluating the limit with numbers that are less than 9. So we're looking for our x values that are less than 9, and they're on this side of the table. So we're going 8.9, 8.99, 8.999, 9 and we're getting really, really close to 9. As these x values are getting close to 9, our y values, or our f of x values, are getting close to 1. We're going 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.999, so it looks like those values are eventually going to hit 1. That means that our left side limit of f of x as x goes to 9 is equal to 1. Remember that when the right side limit of a function and the left side limit of a function are different, the overall limit at that number does not exist. Because the right side limit of f of x as x approaches 9 and the left side limit of f of x as x approaches 9 are different, the overall limit does not exist. In this situation, we're asked to evaluate the limit of f of x as x approaches 11. And we're given this table with some x values that are getting close to 11 but are not quite 11. We never plug in 11 for x here. So we're given stuff on the left side and stuff on the right side. Let's first take a look at the numbers on the left side. So we have 10.7 and 10.99 getting closer to 11, which is the value that we're supposed to be finding the limit for. As it's getting closer to 11, our f of x values are getting closer to 10. We're going 10.3, 10.001. So it looks like our left side limit of f of x as x approaches 11 is equal to 10. And we write that like this. From the left side, we just do the little minus sign there. That's equal to 10. Now let's look at the right side. So as we're coming from the right side, we have 11.3, 11.01, and the f of x values, we have 9.6, 9.999, getting pretty close to 10. So we can make a reasonable guess that the limit of f of x as x goes to 11 from the right side is also equal to 10 because these f of x values are approaching 10. When the limit on the left side and the limit on the right side match, that means that the limit does exist and it is whatever these numbers are. So in this case, the limit of f of x as x approaches 11 equals 10. Now we're given a limit to evaluate, but we're not given the table. It just says find the limit of 3x plus 5 as x approaches 7 using a table. This means that we need to make our own table. So I'm going to make a table of x values and f of x values, and I want my values to be getting closer and closer to 7 from both the left side and the right side. So from the left side, I'm going to do x equals 6.9, 6.99, and 6.999, because I'm trying to get as, as close as possible to 7 without actually touching 7. And then on the right side, I'm going to go 7.001, 7.01, and 7.1. And now I'm going to evaluate all of these values. I'm going to plug in 6.9 for x into this function, 3x plus 5, and I'm going to plug in 6.99 and continue with all the rest of the x values. So one way that we can do this is just to get our calculator and plug in 3 times 6.9, 20.7 plus 5. And then we get that the f of x value is 25.7. And then we would repeat that process with 6.99. 
but if you have a graphing calculator available to use, there's actually a faster way, and it will definitely be faster when we start doing more complicated limits than trying to plug in the x value to that function. So the way that we can do a table with our graphing calculator is first to put in the function that we're given. So if you hit y equals, I'm going to plug in 3x plus 5. Enter. And then I'm going to go to my table settings, and I'm going to change my independent value to ask because I want to be able to put in values for x and I want it to give me the dependent values. I don't want it to automatically generate the x values because there's a, there are specific values in this table that I want to plug in. So now I have my table set up already and now I'm going to I'm now I'm actually going to go to my table, second table, and now I'm able to plug in. I can plug in 6.9 for x, 6.99, 6.999 and then do the rest of my values, 7.001, 7.01, and 7.1. I'm not gonna copy these values over onto the paper just for time, but we can see that it looks like, so as X is approaching seven from the left side, the values are going 25.7, 25.97, and 25.997, getting pretty close to 26. And then from the right side, if we start with 7.1, which is the furthest away on the right side, they're going 26.3, 26.03, 26.003. So they're getting pretty close to 26 on both sides. So we can reasonably assume that the limit of f of x, sorry, not the limit of f of x, the limit of 3x plus 5 as x approaches 7 is equal to 26. The next example asks us to find the limit as the limit of 4x squared minus 5x plus 9 as x approaches 8. And it asks us to use a table. So I'm going to use the table on my graphing calculator. So first I'm going to input the function. I need to input 4x squared minus 5x plus 9. And then I'm going to go to my table and I get to choose the numbers that I'm gonna put in for x. Since I'm looking for my limit as x approaches eight, I'm gonna put in numbers that are getting progressively closer to eight, but are not actually eight. So I'm gonna do 7.9, 7.99, 7.999, that's from the left side, and then from the right side, I'll do 8.001, 8.01, 8.1. And if we, if we look at the behavior of this function, um, from the left side, it's going 219.14, 224.41, 224.94, getting pretty close to 225. And from the right side, it's going 230, 225.59, 225.06. .05, so it's a reasonable assumption that we can make here that the limit of f of the limit of 4x squared minus 5x plus 9 as x approaches 8 is equal to 225. Okay, we have a third example of finding limits using tables, and this time it looks like a rational function. So I'm going to repeat the same process. First step, I'm going to plug that function into my calculator so that I can generate a table. When you're plugging in rational functions, or really any function, it's really important that you use parentheses to surround the different parts because the calculator cannot accurately interpret um, the order of operations that you want sometimes, so it's important to use those parentheses. So I have x squared plus 4x minus 12 all over x minus 2. Now I'm going to go to my table and I'm going to want to put in values that are close to 2. I'm going to do 1.9, 1.99, 1.999, and then on the right side 2.001, 2.01, and 2.1. Um, close to 2 but not actually 2. And it looks like from the left side, it's, it's getting closer and closer to 8. And from the right side, it's getting closer and closer to 8. That means that the limit of this function as x approaches 2 is equal to 8. Now, at this point, you may be wondering, why can't you just plug in the actual limit value that you're trying to find, which is 2? Why can't we just plug in 2 into the calculator and have it give us exactly what the limit is? Let's try plugging in 2 for this one. So if we plug in x equals 2, it says error. Let's think about why that is. This is a rational function. What happens if we plug 2 into this function? We're going to get a denominator of 2 minus 2, which is 0, and we can never ever divide by 0. So 
what's actually going on at this rational function is that we have a whole at x equals 2. So if we were to factor the top, we would get x minus, sorry, x plus 6 times x minus 2 all over x minus 2. And then remember, when we have a common factor on the top and bottom, that can cancel, but that means that there's a whole at x equals 2. So we're left with the function x plus 6. So if we were to graph this function out, we have, we have a pretty normal function, except at x equals 2, we have a hole in our graph, because that's what we found over here. So when we plug in, when we plug 2 into our calculator, that's why we get an error. But re remember that a limit can exist at a whole because the limit is just asking what is the function approaching? What is the f, what is f of x approaching as x is approaching 2? Even though there's not actually a value for the function at, at x equals 2, there is a limit at x equals 2, and that limit is 8, as we found earlier when we plugged in the table. And that's why you have to plug in values for x that are getting closer and closer and closer to what your limit is, but why you can't actually just plug in what the limit is in specific cases. Okay, one more example of limits using tables. We're trying to find the limit of x minus 8 over x plus 4 as x approaches negative 4. First step, as always, is just to plug the function into the graphing calculator using the y equals function. So we'll do x minus 8 over x plus 4, and then go to our table. And I'm going to want values that are getting closer and closer to x being negative 4 without actually plugging in negative 4. So I'm going to plug in negative 4.1, negative 4.01, negative 4.001. That's, that's coming from the left side. And then coming from the right side, I'll do 3.9, sorry, negative 3.999, negative 3.99, and negative 3.9. So something, something more interesting is going on here. As we are approaching the limit from the left side, as we're going from negative 4.1, negative 4.01, negative 4.001, we are getting larger and larger and larger values. And that means if you just see the, if you see these numbers increasing exponentially, that means that our graph looks like if we have if this is negative 4 right over here, that means that. From the, from the left side, the numbers are just getting larger and larger, and they are going to eventually just go up to infinity on the left side. And then on the right side, it looks like when we're really, really close to negative 4, we have a very small number. And as we move further away from negative 4, we have slightly, um, slightly larger numbers. So that means that we have, as it's going from, the, as, um, as it approaches negative 4, from the right side, it's approaching negative infinity. So remember, when we see infinity or negative infinity on the graph, that means that the limit of this function does not exist because infinity is not definable and that's what's called unbounded behavior on a function.